All right, what's good, fam? Today, we're going into the evolution of the AMC and GME short squeeze. So, this video is on AMC, GME manipulation, the manipulation that has happened over the past year, even maybe extending over a year now. So, many of you, I'm sure, have heard of the GameStop short squeeze. Maybe not the AMC short squeeze, but about eight, nine months ago, back in January, no, this is like 12 months ago now, uh, the GameStop short squeeze was all over. It, it went completely viral. Every news outlet was talking about it. Everyone that invests was talking about it. This was the play of the century. And a month later, nobody was talking about it. it nobody. Uh, a month later, the, the biggest investment, what was it? Dogecoin. So this is all complete manipulation, you guys. We're going to go deep into the evolution of the AMC and GMC, GMC, GME short squeeze and how you can participate in probably the biggest move that has ever happened, that will ever happen in the history of the financial markets. So a little bit of an overview. What are the contents of this video? Number one, what is the AMC and GME short squeeze? How is it possible? I'm going to be going over that, I'm going to be going over exactly what a short squeeze is. The psycho psychological warfare tactics explained, you guys already know what this channel is for. I've been posting videos for the past four plus five years uh, on market manipulation, understanding how it is that these major institutions manipulate us, okay? That's basically what this video is going to be about. And we're going to go over a lot of the tactics used. So the rise of Dogecoin and its leader, Elon Musk, we're going to go over that. We're going to go over the rise of meme coins fueled by Elon Musk uh, back in 2021, mid-21, early 2021. We saw so many people, everybody just buying these dog-related coins. And why? What was the catalyst? It was because Elon Musk just started randomly tweeting out all these different meme coins, these doge dog coins and stuff like that. And there was just a massive frenzy around people buying these meme coins. It went from meme stocks to meme coins. So <clears throat> after this, we're going to explain how Elon goes into buying a Shiba Inu dog and names it Floki. Why, why, why would he do that? Shiba Inu and Floki meme coin divide and conquer strategy. We're going to be going over that type of market manipulation, the manipulation that occurs every day in our life, how they're bringing it into the market. Elon Musk Saturday Night Live appearance and the Doge Father skit. We're going to be going over that. Why exactly did Elon Musk just come out uh, back in May of 2021 on Saturday Night Live in front of not only all of America, but this, I think this was an actual this is like a worldwide event. Like this was huge. We're going to be going over that and the rise of NFTs in 2021 shortly after AMC and GME, another distraction, and short squeeze mainstream media sentiment in 2021 and 2022. What you can expect and where we are now. So for those that may not know, my name is Dylan. Who exactly am I? I personally have been studying the financial markets every day, just about every day of my life for the past six years. However, I am not a financial advisor. Disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. Anything I say, um, 
be sure to do your own research or check a financial advisor before you before you decide to invest in anything. So specifically, uh, I have studied in the realm of market manipulation and the study of psychological warfare tactics perpetuated on retail traders by institutions. Go look over any of my videos in this channel and every single one has been focused on understanding market manipulation, focused on understanding the tactics used by major institutions in order to manipulate us retail traders. I personally have taught tens of thousands of students from all around the world the art of understanding market manipulation via the Forexia Academy. Also, uh, about three years ago, I came to create one of the largest blockchain enterprises. I believe it is the largest blockchain enterprise of all of Central America here in Costa Rica. We launched the first ever third generation blockchain technology here in Central America. So I know what I'm talking about when it comes to crypto, when it comes to blockchain, when it comes to Forex, when it comes to stacks, and when it comes to specifically market manipulation. All right, so let's go over a little bit of a story background, you guys. What happened? I know maybe since this was a year ago, uh, maybe you don't really remember it too well, but I'm sure you, you do remember that phrase, GameStop short squeeze. So how it all got started, GME and AMC. They were falling stocks. They've been falling even since before the pandemic. But now due to the pandemic, they started falling even more volatilely. They, they, they were due to go bankrupt, okay? All the data sets, all of the analysis, everything that these major institutions have done, right? Because they do their homework before actually investing in something. Now, they did their homework and they said, this, the, this is done, okay? These companies, they're done. GME, GameStop, it's not getting any revenue. AMC, for example, AMC, if anybody doesn't know what AMC is, AMC is a theater company or organization that has uh, theaters all around the world, uh, movie theaters to be exact, and they have about a thousand movie theaters worldwide. Every single one was shut down for COVID over uh, for more than six months. So zero, absolutely zero revenue was generated. This um, was an opportunity, right? Institutions saw an opportunity to short sell the stock. Or in other words, bet on the collapse and the bankruptcy of the company, okay? So they were betting on the demise of the company. They were shorting or selling against the stock. Major institutions started short selling the stock. There was so much selling pressure that synthetics, synthetic stock shares were created and borrowed to the investors that wanted to get into the short selling action. So basically, there are two ways to sell in the market. There is buying and then selling, right? That's the normal way, right? You buy and then you sell. But then there is selling and then buying back. But, but, how is it possible to sell something that you don't own? It's not. Okay, so in this second scenario where we're selling and then buying back, that's what short selling is called. And in this scenario, this is what's happening to the major investors, the major institutions in that are in GameStop and AMC. 
They have short sold these stocks. Now, in order for them to short sell these stocks, like I said, I asked you a question. How is it possible for these guys to short sell something that they don't own? That's the number one question to ask you. Well, what happens is that the broker loans them, the broker borrows them shares to sell and then buy back at a later time, pocketing the difference, hoping that the market goes down and they can pocket the difference. Now, a group of traders on, so, on a social media site called Reddit caught wind of this massive short and started to buy, causing the price to rise. Now, what's really ingenious is that maybe there was one or two or a small group of people that saw this happening, but they couldn't do anything about it because their bank accounts, right? It's just like me and you, we don't have a hundred million. We don't have a billion dollars to throw into the market to, to pump the price up a little bit so that, no. But we have social media. We have each other. It's us against them, you guys. It's David against Goliath. It's these massive big banks that have been screwing not only us, but our parents, our grandparents, all of our generations. They've been screwing over without any repercussion. Now is the time to get back at them. And this small group of Reddit traders saw this, but they, they said to themselves, okay, it's, this isn't going to be possible with just us. We have to work together. And that's exactly what happened. They went to Reddit. They started creating content. They started saying, creating uh, a movement to get people to buy into GameStop and AMC to start rising the price. Maybe if one person jumps in, it doesn't rise. Maybe if 10 people jump in, it doesn't rise. But what about 10,000, 100,000, a million of us retail traders, each with $100, $1,000 in our accounts, right? That starts to add up, you guys. So that's how it all got started. That's really the story background behind GME, GameStop, AMC, um, and everything that's going on or that, that had happened about 12 months ago. This was the big, big story 12 months ago. So what is short selling? I kind of already explained it that there's two types of selling. There's buying and then selling, and there's selling and then buying back but how do you sell something that you don't own? You can't. You have to borrow that asset to sell and then buy it back at a different time. So short selling explained. Short selling is the act of selling shares that were borrowed to you in hopes that the price, that the stock price falls and you can make a profit, profit in the difference of the price once you buy back the share. Now, <clears throat> this is where things get juicy. This is where things get, get really, really crazy, guys. If you're buying, okay, let's say you buy into the market. You buy at $10. If you buy a stock, a, a share of a stock at the price of $10 and the price drops to $0, you are guaranteed that this is the floor. The, the market can't go past zero. You know what I mean? It can't go to negative one, negative two, negative 10, negative 20, and you just keep losing and losing and you go into debt. That doesn't happen when you buy because zero is guaranteed the floor. The price isn't going to go negative on you, okay? However, 
In the case of short selling, you are selling a stock that you do not own. So you must buy the stock back at a later date from the borrower. Now, that means that you are hoping that the price goes down. You're betting on the price going down. However, what happens if the price goes up? If the price goes up, short sellers are exposed to infinite amounts of risk. Why is this or how is this? It is because there is no ceiling. Price can keep going for ten for for to a hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars a share, and if us retail traders don't want to sell our stocks, the price will keep going up substantially. So, since a stock price has technically no ceiling, there's no max price. The institutions left short selling are exposed to an infinite amount of risk, okay? What is the key takeaway here? The key takeaway is that the borrowers of these shares must pay massive amounts to the brokers in order to keep these borrowed positions open and active. The more time they keep these positions open, the more money they are losing. In the end, they will be forced to liquidate their positions or be margin called. If, if, this is the most important word in this entire sentence. If we keep holding, that is our our only job, you guys, do not sell, okay? 12 months ago, they told us that the, the short squeeze happened back in January. They told us that was the short squeeze. That was a fake short squeeze. What is a short squeeze? A short squeeze explained. Okay, in order for institutions to liquidate or exit the short positions that they have, they must buy back their borrowed shares. Since there is a limited amount of borrowed shares in existence, and there are much, excuse me, there are a limited amount of shares in, is in existence, and there are much more borrowed shares, that means that when you buy back the borrowed shares, it will cause the price to rise. Now, all of these institutions, there are more than 51 major institutions, hedge funds, even government organizations that have shorted GameStop and AMC. Now, they must buy back at a later price. And they want the price to be extremely low so that they can make a profit. See, if they sold at $10 and the price is at $5 and they buy back, that means they profit $5. However, if the price goes up to $15 and they have to buy back in, well, just the, just the first out of all of the, the different hedge funds and, and institutions, the first one out of those 51, the first one when he buys back in, he will push the price up. And then when the, the next hedge fund buys back in, He'll push the price up again, and it will cause this massive, massive, exponential move to happen in the markets as all of these 
institutions and hedge funds are fighting to get out of the market, to pull out, that's what will cause this, the most parabolic move, right? We're talking the price of GME and AMC could go to the hundreds of thousands of dollars per share. Since the majority of stock float, the amount of stock that is available to the public is owned by retail investors, we can decide the price at which the shares will be liquidated at. Okay? This is what you have to understand. Since we own most of the shares that are available to the public, and these are the shares that the institutions have to buy back, we as retail investors that have these shares, we can say, all right, you wanna buy these shares back? Well, my shares cost $100,000 a piece. My shares cost $500,000 a piece. My shares, my, my friend shares here, he, he's selling his at a million dollars a pop. And since there is a consensus between all of us, all of us Reddit traders, all of us apes, as they call us, since we have created a consensus between us, we have agreed that we're not going to exit this for some chump change. We're not going to exit our shares at $100 a piece. We're not going to make a few thousand dollars from this. We're in this to retire not only ourselves, our family, but the generations to come. Our family's generations. Our kids' generations, their kids, their grandkids. This is the kind of money that we can make, you guys, if we stay together, if we hold together, and if we just keep buying. This is what these major institutions, these major hedge funds, these massive banks that have controlled basically humanity for the past hundreds of years, this is what they're scared of because they let it slip. The fake squeeze. I'm going to admit, you guys, I fell for it. Back 12, 11, 12 months ago in January, I was going to buy GME. I was going to buy GameStop because I was like, I want to get in the action. But it happened so fast. The squeeze, right? Because GameStop went from being worthless, right? Being went from a dollar or, or ten dollars to four hundred and eighty-four dollars. Basically almost overnight, okay, in just a few days, it popped off like that. Now, this is extremely important. This was the fake squeeze, you guys. Notice how everyone was talking about GameStop, the GameStop short squeeze. And then it happened. And then a few days later, nobody was talking about it. Not a word from anybody, okay? If the institutions, if all these major investors these hedge funds, these institutions, these big banks actually bought back. This was the most shorted stock in the history of humanity. This stock would have went to thousands of thousands of dollars. Minimum, okay? Tens of thousands of dollars. But it only went to 480 dollars but everybody and, and their mother everyone every single person heard about the GameStop short squeeze and then a week later zip zero nobody was talking about it 
What was everybody talking about? It wasn't GME. It wasn't AMC. All right, let's go on to why would they fake the squeeze, right? Well, you fake the squeeze because you want to make retail traders think the squeeze already happened so that they sell their positions. Makes sense, right? I mean, if you believe that the squeeze already happened and everybody, everybody's saying, oh, it's gonna go to $100,000 a share, $10,000 a share, a million dollars a share, and it only went to $500 a share, you, you might be kind of disappointed and, and you might want to sell thinking that the squeeze has already happened. This is the name of the game, you guys. Divide and conquer. To funnel the attention elsewhere. Give me one second. All right, funnel the attention elsewhere. You made everybody aware that of this fake squeeze. Everybody, everyone was watching it. It was all over the news, all over mainstream media, all over Facebook, all over Reddit, all over everywhere. Every social media site you could possibly go on, everybody was talking about it. I personally thought the squeeze already happened when GME, when GameStop short, soared past $400. However, the mainstream media outlets are still advising everyone to sell their GME and AMC shares. So even after the short squeeze, the mainstream media outlets kept telling people that AMC and GME are worthless. They're worthless stocks. They're not going to move. Why are, why, are you, why are you still in it? Why are, you why are you still trading it? Sell that crap. The Motley Fool, one of the biggest uh, investing news sites in the world, created over 1,500 articles for the year of 2021 bashing AMC and GameStop, telling people that it was the shittiest investment of their lives, that you have to get out, that it's going to go bankrupt, that it's going nowhere. Why do you think, if, if the short squeeze already happened, you know, how many, how much do you think these articles cost? Right, because they're paying people, that's 1,500 articles, maybe at $100, $200 a piece, right? That's, a, that's quite a bit of money, right? Just on these Motley Fool articles. Now, add on to all the bots that they're sending out to Reddit, to social media, to Instagram, to all these different places, to skewer the sentiment to make you think that the short squeeze already happened? To make you close your position early? This is alarming and makes you wonder why would they care so much about people selling if they had already covered their positions, right? If the short squeeze already happened and that was when they were covering their positions, way back in January, way back in uh, a year ago, 12 months ago, in 2021, why, why is there 1,500 articles of the Botley Fool telling us to sell? Why is there Yahoo News, why is Jim Cramer telling everybody that the short squeeze already happened? It's hard to gauge a war when you're in the war zone. I guess this is more of an excuse <laughs> to why I was fooled, why I thought the 
the short squeeze had already happened. But coming back to it 11, 12 months later, it's obvious that it hasn't, you guys. And it's obvious that these guys are scared. They're scared shitless. They're worried that they're going to lose their empire. They're worried that they're going to go bankrupt. They're worried that they were wrong and we were right. Divide and conquer, that's the name of the game, you guys. I was fooled to believe that AMC and GME squeeze had already happened. This is what they want you to believe. Reddit group Wall Street's Bets has currently over 10 million members right now, last time I checked. Imagine if all 10 million if they all started working together to buy the stock. Maybe 12 months ago there wasn't 10 million people in the group. Maybe half that, 5 million or 2 million. But even that amount of people helping each other, uh, you know, this is the most, this is the biggest. 10 million people? What, what other hedge fund has 10 million people working together? You know what I mean? So this is what they had to do. They had to divide all of those people. Because if all 10 million, or, or it doesn't matter how many people are, it were in the group at the time, if all, even if there's a million people, if all million people started working together on this, it would have been mayhem. So the divide and conquer strategy went full effect. Think about what happened during 2021 and ask yourself, why? Why did that happen? Maybe at the time it didn't make any sense because it's hard to gauge a war when you're in the war zone. But I'm sure it'll make perfect sense now. Musk is the puppet. Elon Musk is the perfect enemy. Why? Because he's the perfect friend. He's just this perfect nonchalant guy that can tweet and make the market move. Not even Mark Cuban, not even Trump, or maybe a little bit Trump, but I mean, the, you couldn't have chose Biden for this. You couldn't have chose Biden to, to be the, the puppet for this movement. You couldn't have chose the president of Russia, Putin, to, 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 to lead this, this war. You couldn't do that because their image just isn't that. It just it just doesn't work. But Elon Musk, Elon Musk is the perfect puppet. He's the perfect enemy. He he's this guy that does things that are impossible. Yo, he's putting chips in people's brains. He's he's sending people to space apparently. He is <laughs> right? Like, come on, what can't he do? And there's no repercussion. It's not like he's some freaking president that's taking care of a nation. Musk is the perfect puppet. So what happened? What happened? What happened back in January? Elon Musk comes out and he starts telling everybody about Game Stonk. 2021, Elon is self-proclaimed leader for Dogecoin, even naming himself the Doge Father. Elon Musk is nothing more than a Dogecoin puppet to get you distracted from the AMC and GME 
short squeeze. That will happen because it has yet to happen. They have not covered their shorts yet. AMC is more overshorted than GME. But Elon wants you to focus on GameStonk and Dogecoin. And then after that, he doesn't even want you to talk about, think about GameStonk. When, uh, okay, ever since he started talking about, I think ever, even ever since this tweet that you can see on the screen right here, at 3.08 p.m. January 26, 2021, I am almost 100% sure that this was the only tweet he ever tweeted about the short squeeze, even after this. Why? Because they had to capture your attention and divert that attention somewhere else. Let's look at the data. Let's look at what Google Trends is telling us. Google Trends data shows the compares comparison between searches for AMC GME versus Dogecoin. Notice here that All right, notice, okay, we can see AMC is the blue line down here, GME is the red line, and the yellow line is Dogecoin. Notice how back in January, right around January 10, January 15, uh, January 20th, the price, or not the price, in, in Google, these are keyword searches, okay, where we're, we're we're searching uh, how over time the interest of these keywords. So AMC and GME out of nowhere they just shot up their their um, their search history. Their the the people the interest over time they, they just completely shot up. And look what's right behind that the yellow line. It's Dogecoin. Now, notice that the red and blue line, they peak at 75, and then they drop off. And then come back to May, everything kind of drops off a little bit. Come back to May, AMC and GME still completely dropped off but Dogecoin is just going crazy. And if you actually look to the left of that chart, you can see the average with the, the blue, the red, and the yellow bar. Notice that on average, more people, there was, there's been more interest on Dogecoin. That is the distraction. That is the distraction, you guys. Dogecoin is the distraction because they had to get your attention. They had to get your attention somehow. Elon Musk got your attention. He got you into Reddit. He got you in the Wall Street bets. Right? I'm sure maybe someone listening to this video, I'm sure someone, some of you guys saw this tweet from Elon and we're like, oh crap, I'm gonna see what's going on. I'm gonna enter this Reddit. A few days later, or a few weeks later, everybody was distracted by what? Well, what happened during May? Why do we see Dogecoin hitting 100% interest on this little graph right here. Why do we see this? Because Elon Musk went up Saturday Night Live told everybody that Dogecoin was basically the future. There was so much hype around Dogecoin that everybody forgot about GME. They made everybody forget about AMC. 
That was their plan. That is the number one plan. That's, that's, that's their most important objective. Let's review the timeline. From January to February, GME did a completely fake squeeze, right? Now, GME wasn't the only one. AMC also did a fake squeeze, going from $2 to $20 in a matter of a few days. This is what they want you to believe was the squeeze. Why? So that, well, if you didn't take profit way up there at $20, now price is at $5, $8, $10. Well, now, now you better sell. Now you better sell off. You, you missed it. That's what they want you to believe. From May to June, there was the Dogecoin rally. And then from June to July, another AMC fake squeeze. Notice how they, they're fake squeezing. And notice how they fake squeezed AMC twice, but GME only once. And take notice at when they squeezed AMC and why. Here is the GME squeeze for all mainstream media to see. This was, a, this was what they told you was the squeeze. This is what they, they want you to believe was the squeeze. The squeeze didn't happen, you guys. This was a fake squeeze. AMC, January to February, another fake squeeze. Now, this is where things get interesting. We know Dogecoin is a distraction. Dogecoin has no utility whatsoever. Dogecoin has no use cases. There is, there's no reason to buy Dogecoin except for the shits and giggles, okay? There's, there's no way you're going to tell me one of the richest guys on the planet is actually investing in Dogecoin. Come on. All right. Back in May, June, from May to June, we saw Dogecoin go on an exponential rally. Everybody thought it was going to hit a dollar. But this was all a distraction, you guys. So what do you think happened to all of these Reddit traders that were in GME or AMC and they saw the mainstream media say, go, the, the, the mainstream media, everybody went on television and they were like, okay, the GME and the short squeeze and the AMC short squeeze, it happened already. Um, but... Oh, look at this. Dogecoin is up 150%. Uh, Dogecoin is up 2,000% on the year. Oh my goodness. Dogecoin this, Dogecoin that, Dogecoin here, Dogecoin there, Dogecoin everywhere. Why? Because it's a distraction. What happened right after this Dogecoin rally? What happened directly after AMC, another fake squeeze. This squeeze was 10 times bigger, or at least five times bigger than the squeeze, uh, the previous squeeze. Went from about four or five dollars to around $70. But what you have to understand is this. Dogecoin rallied in May, and ended rallying in June. 
So you saw Dogecoin rally or start to rally and uh, you have been in AMC and GME for the past six months and it hasn't done shit. Hasn't done anything. And all of a sudden, you see Dogecoin shooting the moon. Don't tell me you're not going to sell your AMC shit and your GME that hasn't done shit for the past six months. Of course you're going to sell. That's the... That's what they wanted you to do, okay? They wanted you to sell your GME, to sell your AMC, and to buy Dogecoin. And then what happened? Dogecoin hits a high mid-May and starts dropping in June. You're not going to take your money out while it's dropping, what happens in June? AMC finally squeezes again. And all those people that sold their AMC and GME for Dogecoin? Well, where are they right now? They're basically getting screwed over. This was all a distraction, you guys. Dogecoin was a distraction. The exact timing of it was perfect. You see, this is all, all of these events are orchestrated. They're pre-planned and orchestrated in front of you exactly for this reason, this psychological manipulation. They knew that after six months of you holding your AMC position, thinking that the squeeze already happened, that you were going to dump your AMC and buy Dogecoin. If you bought Dogecoin, sell it right now, sell Dogecoin, and get into one of these meme stocks, okay? Can't believe I'm saying this. You guys, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> All right, part two is coming soon, you guys. I really enjoyed this video. I hope you guys do your own research, D-Y-O-R. Do your own research, don't leave it up to me. Don't believe that I'm just this, this, this master or something. Like, I'd rather you come to the conclusion for yourself so that you have the self-confidence to hold rather than you just believing in my confidence, right? Because in the end, it's up to you. It's your decision. I'm not pressing the sell button. You are. So when you get out of your position, it's on you. But I want you to have the confidence to not get out of your position until this hits $10,000, $100,000, over $100,000 a share, okay? I'm gonna leave a, a video in the description, you guys. Shout out to the channel, Al from Boston. I'm gonna leave his video in the description. He has a video explaining why. Uh, he's actually a undergrad from Harvard. So if you, if you need any more credentials, this guy is under, undergrad from Harvard that is telling you that AMC could hit a million dollars a share. So I'll leave it in the description. I'll leave that video in the description. And like I said, part two is coming soon. So if you guys did enjoy this, leave a like, share it, subscribe, whatever. I'm done. Peace out. Much love, everybody. Take care.